Father God, thank you for this Sunday morning. Thank you for the instructor and the word that you will give us and the wisdom that you will impart to us. Help us to understand this teaching and allow us to apply it to our knowledge base in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. April 11th, we're pretty much halfway through this month, and we thank God for springtime. We thank Him for His Holy Spirit that leads and guides us. And I ask Him to lead and guide me through this lesson. Our word today. Um, Lesson is coming from Romans 5 1. And our topic today is justification by faith. Our golden text is Romans 5 8. But God commended his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Praise the Lord. And we thank God for that. That even though we were still in sin, Christ died for us. I think of when Jesus was going through trials, and I think of the time when he was um, condemned by the rulers as society and even when he was um, when Barabbas was chosen over him who was clearly a sinner who was already in captivity as much as Jesus did and the people heard near and far of the healings, the miracles, and all the good teachings that he was doing. They chose a sinner over him to be released. And I, to me, it's like only a sinner will choose a sinner over a righteous. And he had to go through so much. But while we were yet sinners, while in the day that Jesus lived, so many was sinners, he died for them. He died for the same one who endured his crucifixion. His crucifixion. And it's just it's, it's it's sad because we knew you know you know we just we just celebrated Easter. We know that through the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. But he took no joy in doing it through the suffering. There was no joy in that. But it it was suffering. It was heartache. It was just so much hurt that he was going through, knowing that he poured his life into teaching the gospel, poured his life into the cause of his father, the same sinner. Yet, he was crucified. Of course, he knew that maybe he still loved him, but it really had, you know, when we look at the passion of Christ, it seemed like more was against him that for him. And we can never compare our life to what Jesus has gone through because of course every strike that he bore, he 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 paid it all. He 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 knew everything that we would even go through. It, it, everything that we would endure. And that was his joy that knowing that through it all, he is going to save many from their sins, many from the, um, many 
of going to hell. That was his joy. He loved us so much that he knew that when it was said and done, when it was finished, he would accomplish what he said. That those who believe in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. That was his joy. That was his joy. Many of, of us, we experience joy as something really jubilant, you know, um, in us, something bubbly with, with just so much uh, joy. Joy to us means happiness, means beyond happiness. When we look at joy compared to happiness, joy goes beyond happiness. And when you are going through something, and you still have the whole, you have the Holy Spirit in you, just in just encouraging you. That's joy. When you're going through something, and you, through the Holy Spirit, are allowed to see beyond the situation to what is to come. That is joy. When you're going through something, I, I can imagine somebody buying a house and all the things that you have to go through through the, the mortgage, through, you know, uh, through the, you know, the mortgage company, through getting uh, all the uh, credentials uh, you know, lined up and, and all of the finances and, you know, you're going back and forth with the bank, back and forth with the realtor, and it really seems very tedious. I can imagine that potential homeowner feeling so much joy because of what is before them. They see this glorious home that they're just ready to get in. That is nothing compared to what Jesus, the joy he experienced. And it's you know, and I'm not trying to put material things on it. I'm just trying to bring in a, a practical sense. We don't always feel happiness through, through it, you know, through joy. Yes, somebody wants to ask the question. Well, just that, uh, you know, your, your line of uh, discussion, uh, I looked at the Spurgeon reading, and it talked about, I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. And the commentary says, Did earth or heaven, or, or heaven ever behold a sadder spectacle of woe in soul and body? Our Lord felt himself to be weak as water poured upon the ground. The placing of the cross in the socket had, taken, had shaken him with great violence, had strained all the ligaments, pained every nerve, and more or less dislocated his bones. Burdened with the with his own weight, the grand sufferer felt the strain increasing every moment of those six long hours. His sense of faintness and general weakness were overpowering, while to his own consciousness he became nothing but a mass of misery and swooning sickness, just to embellish the, the price of the joy. <laughs> yeah, when you say embellish, I'm like, really embellish? But yes. That really describes the embellishment of the joy. Wow, wow. Those are all the things, and, and, and we're, we just get a glimpse um, through, um, you know, just excellent scholars, uh, commentary of the Word of God and what Jesus went through. Of course, um, when you look at the Passion of Christ, um, Deacon Michael has uh, added on. And I came and, 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 and we just was looking, I was looking at the tail end of it. And it's like, how could you experience joy watching a movie like that? You know, it's, 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 it's you know, it brings you to tears. It's hard to watch. And so all the more what Christ was going through, it only, it took the strength of God the power of God within him to endure it, to endure all that. All, you know, the scripture, 
depicts the suffering of Christ beyond the, the stripes. But the, 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 the scripture depicts the suffering, but then we read in Romans, who for the joy that was set before him they do at the cross, there's no way in our uh, in our human mind that we can experience the joy that it took to endure the suffering. This is one of the scriptures that we're going to come to, you know, come and, uh, it, it come into. And so I really felt that like it's this, this really emphasize this one scripture because we take it lightly. We take it lightly. Everything that Jesus went through on our behalf, and we're going to read why it all had to happen. Why it had to happen. We know the same was going rapid, but we're going to look into the end result of why Jesus had to go through all of that. Praise the Lord. So Jeremiah, I'm going to ask you to read Romans 5, verse 1 through 11. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, for whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand, and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience, experience, and experience, hope. And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely a righteous man will one die, yet preadventure for a good man should, should some would even dare to die. But God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. <coughs> Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son. Much more, being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. For the joy before, the, the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. It's not in that passage, but we are going, I just felt led to look at that scripture as we go through this lesson. God is through Jesus Christ alone. God is through Jesus Christ alone. It took the Spirit of God through Jesus to help him endure the cross. It took the power, the power of God through Jesus to help him endure the cross. It took that same power of God to raise Jesus from the dead. And that same power quickens our mortal bodies through Christ Jesus. It's a cycle. Before Jesus left the earth, he said, I pray that you are one with the Father, just as I was one with the Father. When we are one with the Father, we experience that same strength, that same power to endure that Jesus had to go through to endure the cross. It takes the same Spirit of God through Jesus to experience the joy sometimes of just living. It takes the same Spirit of God. God is through Jesus Christ alone. I don't know how all the other uh, individuals of other religions, I don't know how they 
they get their joy. I don't know how they get their strength. But I know that the Bible that I read and the interpretation through the Holy Spirit, the revelation that I receive, I have to go through Jesus. The one who endured the cross for my sins. Not Buddha, not Muhammad. What did they do? What did those other entities, those other beings do for you, for your salvation? They have great, they have great speeches. They have great sayings and phases and confessions. But I know the power that I have through Jesus Christ, the one who suffered for my sins, who suffered for the world. And so we're going to go into justification by faith in Christ. There is no other salvation but through Jesus Christ because it started from the Father his unconditional love toward us that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever shall believe shall have shall not perish but have everlasting life and so we have peace with God when Adam and Eve disobeyed they rebelled against God Mankind became alienated from God because of sin. The conditions for peace with God were atonement for sin and restored righteousness according to God's standard for mankind. We are going through God's standard, not the world's standard, God's and that's why it is important to emphasize that peace with God is through Jesus Christ alone. Peace of God is through Jesus Christ alone. This is a very important part of humanity's peace treaty with God. We have a peace treaty with God. We see throughout the years how long it's taken. Israel, the Palestinians, to come to some agreement for a peace treaty. We have a peace treaty with God. <laughs> peace with God is not possible outside of Christ. It's just not. And our foundation is solidified through the cross. It's through the cross. It's through the suffering. It's through the joy that was set before him why he endured it. And when we are going through suffering, peace with God does not mean we are now free from suffering. We already know this. And so when individuals get saved because they feel that all their problems are going to go, they are being dispensable. It's the greatest deception of the gospel to think that all your worries and all your troubles are going to just go away because of salvation. Salvation goes beyond this world. 
But we have peace. We can have peace through tribulation. We can have joy through tribulation. Because of God's standard, we know what Jesus has been through. We don't go through that kind of tribulation. We just don't. So when we look at the cross and everything that Jesus bears for us, our earthly affliction does not even compare with that. And it doesn't compare with the glory that we shall receive. And some of our glory is going to be on earth. God is, God don't allow us to go through suffering after suffering after suffering and don't experience any joy in his life. There's just no way that you could go through suffering, suffering, suffering. That's why the scripture says, the envy of the kill still to destroy, but God that we may have life and life more abundantly. There is still abundant life on earth. There is still abundant life on earth. And God gives us that abundant life, but we go through tribulation in order to know how to receive the fulfillment of this promise while on earth. That's the experience that we have to go through. And I don't like to, to, to I don't like when um, it said, and I know it's true, but I don't like when it said that you should expect suffering. You should expect tribulation. We already know that the enemy will try us and that will that may come our way but we don't have to expect it it's not you know it's it's <laughs> it's a part of living it's a part of living but we have to focus on the joy Christ. We, su we, 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 we may suffer a little, but joy comes in the morning. And that is why we have those scriptures to help us endure. Those who believe in the, in the trouble free salvation are missing for, but we are able to rejoice through the midst of suffering. Jesus is our example. And so I'm going to be quiet on the <laughs> And I'm going to ask Jeremiah to read Justifi Justified by Faith in Christ. Uh, and you read the peace. Here peace. As Abraham was justified by faith, so are we. It is not about what we have done, but about what Christ has done. Faith in Christ is the means of our justification. The Greek word for justified was a legal term equivalent to a not guilty verdict in a court of law. Because we have been justified, that is, put right with God by faith, we now enjoy peace with God. Instead of being the enemies of God because of sin, we enter into a relationship of peace with Him, which also affords us an inner peace unknown before. This is made possible through our Lord Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace. He is the Prince of Peace. That is why to know peace is to know Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace. He is the peacemaker. He is the peacekeeper. I love that song, the peacekeeper. He is our source of peace. Grace. Dig uh, Bible, can you read grace? As believers, we are privileged to have access to the grace of God. This, however, is not because we deserve it. Otherwise, it would not be grace. By its very nature, grace is unmerited favor. 
though undeserved, it is not totally unconditional, as our means of access to God's grace is through faith. Ephesians 2 8. Though not everyone is automatically saved, God will save anyone who has faith in Christ by His grace. And if by grace, then it is no more of works, otherwise grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then it is no more grace. Romans 11.6 All this leads us to rejoice in hope of the glory of God. If justification were something we earned or deserved, we could be proud of our achievement. But since it is by grace, we can only rejoice in the hope given to us through Christ. young adults that are privileged. You know, they have a lot, there are a lot of privileged people out there. And they take advantage of their privilege, too. And they look down on others that don't have the same privilege and have not been raised in the same type of um, um, privileged environment as, as they. And, of course, a lot of times a lot of money is in, money's involved. And they live just this privileged life. Do you know that we're all privileged? We're privileged. We are so privileged. Because we have grace and never deserved it. We never even deserved it. There are, there are young people that they were born into this privilege of environment. We was not, we were not, a lot of us were not poor into a privileged type of environment. But through the grace of Jesus Christ, when we accepted Jesus in our life, we were privileged to grace. And I don't know anyone, I have not met anyone yet that deserve grace. I have not met anyone that deserves grace. And I'm the first one to look in the mirror and say, you do not deserve this. You do not deserve the goodness of God. And when I look back at all that God has brought me through, I didn't deserve it. I did not deserve it. And yet, Jesus inflicted, he was inflicted with so much suffering, so much pain. And yet, he did not deserve that. And you know, a lot of times, life is not fair to us. And we say, I don't deserve this. I don't deserve that. I don't deserve you talking to me like that. I am above that. I don't deserve to go through the suffering. Why am I going through all of this? I mean, I, what did I do? I, I do not deserve this. Christ did not deserve what was given to him what was dished out to him. But because he was the son of God, he was a preacher's kid. <laughs> he was more than a preacher's kid. You know, there are preacher's kids that think that, oh, I don't want to be here in church. You know, I don't deserve to be here. I deserve to do what I want. But it's because of who you, who you are. Christ, gave his life for the world because of who he was. He wasn't just a preacher's kid. God did preach. God gave his word, and many times audibly, through the prophets. 
to the prophet. But Christ, because of whose he was, he suffered. He was the only one that I know was born to die. That was his purpose. He was born to die. And yet, we are privileged with the grace of God through Jesus. It's through Jesus that we have this grace. You know what we're to covet? as believers, we were not privileged to have access to it. If we don't deserve it. If we deserved it, it would not be grace. It would not be grace. Though under, un, underserved, it is not totally unconditional as our means of access to God's grace is through faith. Let me read it again. Though undeserved, it is not totally unconditional as our means of access to God's grace is through faith. And so, I want to look at Ephesians 2, 8. Ephesians 2, 8 says, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and not and that not of yourself. It is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in we are walking in grace. We are walking in grace. So undeserved, but we are walking in grace. Tribulation. Must we go through this section? I don't want to go through, I don't want to read this section. <laughs> I was doing great in peace and in grace. <laughs> Does everybody want to read this section? The word translated tribulations comes from a word that means pressure or to squeeze. It could be translated troubles, afflictions, or suffering. There are, of course, many kinds of tribulations that people, both believers and unbelievers, face in life. Some are simply the result of living in a fallen world where everyone experiences death, disease, and disaster. Some problems are self-inflicted, meaning they arise out of bad choices we have made. Other things happen for no apparent reason, but God has ordained a purpose for every trial. What Paul probably had in mind here are tribulations that come upon believers because of their faith in Christ. He had personally suffered persecution and tribulation because he followed Christ and preached the gospel. But these tribulations are not limited to people in full-time mission ministry. All of us can expect persecution. Paul nevertheless could glory in tribulations because the fruit of his ministry glorified Christ. Patience means endurance or perseverance. Those caving in to the pressures of persecution fail to bear fruit, 
but those who endure trials in faith will become stronger. Patience or endurance will produce experience. This particular Greek word means strength of character. Ultimately, hope will be the end result of enduring trials and tribulations. While it may seem paradoxical, those who suffer the most are often the most hopeful people. Giving up quickly may avoid some suffering, but it also eliminates the possibility of developing abundant hope and deep faith. Huh. So there's a lot in here. It is exemplary, exemplary of Christ's suffering. However, what we go through, we know that it doesn't compare to Christ's suffering. The word tribula the word of translated tribulation comes from the word that means pressure or squeeze. A little white of a lemon and orange just came to mind. <laughs> When you squeeze a lemon, put in your tea, or you squeeze a lime or an or orange, you get juice. You get juice. And, I'm think, and, and, and I, I thought of what's inside you come out. <laughs> when you squeeze the pressure, what's inside you comes out. That's why we have to be full of the Word of God. We have to be full of the Holy Spirit. We have to be full of the fruit of the Spirit. When you squeeze, the fruits come out. Joy, peace, long-suffering. What else? Love, joy, faith, peace, long suffering, faith, temperance, temperance, temperance. What more? You said patience, goodness, goodness, all of that. Goodness. <laughs> yeah, patience. All that comes out. Or nine is nine. All that comes out. Ooh. It comes out. And let me tell you when you're under pressure. You need the fruits of the Spirit. You need the Holy Spirit. Because when you're squeezed, you don't want nothing bad to come out. Because it's a test. It's a test of faith. When you're squeezed, when faith comes out, then you are the right track. Because sometimes suffering is not for a moment. <laughs> sometimes it's long. And that's why one of the fruits of the Spirit is long suffering. If you don't have it in you, it ain't going to come out. If you don't have it in you, you are not going to endure. If you don't have it in you, you're going to faint. And some have dropped dead because they couldn't endure. Some have took their own life because they couldn't endure. Yep. Some problems are self-inflicted. They arise out of bad choices. You know, we always taught our sons that there's always a consequences. There are, there's always consequences in what you do. When you do good, good is going to come out. Good is going to come back to you. And we know the opposite. Of bad choices. But guess what? Through grace, 
Though we sometimes make bad choices through the grace of God, He still brings a good expected end. Because guess what? When we do bad, we don't expect, we shouldn't expect a good end. But through grace, through faith in God, and through a repentant heart, the grace of God is then carried out on our life. Paul, glory in tribulation. Why? How? How could he do that? How could he? Glory in tribulation. Because he did do it enough. His character was built. His faith was built. The spirit within him. Through the spirit was exposed. You know, some people try to expose the bad in you. They'll try to expose you. They'll test you. They'll try you. And they'll see what comes out. Sometimes they don't expect the good to come out because of what they do to you. They don't expect the good to come out. If they can see you suffering and know what you're going through in your personal life, they're there in the background watching. They're waiting to see how you're gonna go. How you gonna are you still gonna come to church? I remember we were going through Whoa, some tough times. We were going through some tough times. And there was times I shed tears every day. But through the grace of God and through the strength of God, we were able to endure. We'll never forget it. But we know that we'll also never forget what God did in spite of what was going on. And we were able to hold our head up high because of the word of God and because of the faith in God that he, we knew that he was going to turn his situation And that word, long suffering, began to become flesh. Always like to look at the word, like the word have to become flesh to you in order for you to experience the glory of God. The word has to become flesh to you. And every word of God is not good. It's not good. Tribulation is not good. But when it becomes flesh to you, when you go through it, when you've gone through the fire, and you don't get burned, and when you go through the flood, the flood that the enemy tries to overtake you with, you don't drown. But you come out with more character. You come out humble, <laughs> but you come out. You come out more humble, but you come out. You come out. And many folks come out. Some of the things that you personally have gone through, there are some people that can't even stand a quarter of what you have gone through. But when you come out, you come out with character. And you come out with a testimony that encourages someone else. Hope. 
I'm reading this verse. It's in the latter chapter here. Yeah. All things work together <coughs> for the good for them that love the Lord. And look, I see why the Apostle Paul penned it because he's saying that, um, yeah, he's saying that that we access faith. We access faith. We, I'm sorry, we access grace through faith. And that God dispenses it in our lives so that we go to we go to the process of salvation. And when we go to the process of salvation, then you have you have, you have sanctification and you have um, justification and all these cases. <laughs> but then he's saying that um tribulation and if you don't go to tribulation then you can't see your, you can't, the character in you, nobody can see it. Like Elder Ned said a while ago, he, some people say that they are Christian, and when he's looking, he can't see it. So all these things that we got to go through, and then it took me down to the Memorial Day. The, all these guys give their life for their country. Oh. But they are, what Ralph said, it's scarcely that one man would give his life for a good man. But this man, Christ. Yes. No, ju just look. Yes. It's not for one man. He gave his life for our whole world. We were enemies of God. Yes. Two sins. Yes. Two sins. 
And this man offered himself as a sacrifice. Now they used to do the sacrifice yearly, a certain time of the year. But this man just once offered up, and that was it. So how can we say then that um that 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 we don't want to suffer, but the suffering is in the process because they, they, you, you and my wife talking about the fruit of the spirit and tribulation, bring it that and that, bring it that. But you, you got to go through all these stages before you can come out. I mean, he's taking us through the fire here and saying when you come out, you might come out like gold because that's the only way you, you're going to come out. He's trying to refine us. You know, so it's a process, and salvation is a continual yeah. thing. Wow, yes. What's saved, not always saved. No, <laughs> that, 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 that was wrong. <laughs> it cost my brother his ministry, once saved, forever saved. But if he say that, that, that that's somebody that's talking to him, yeah. another spirit talking to him. But we, we, we just got to bear. And, how much can you bear? Look at the apostle. How much did he bear? At one time he said uh, he, he got a um, tongue in his flesh. Uh, and, and he asked the God that he served to remove it. And he said, no, my grace is so sufficient. Uh, live with it. Uh, and I'm paraphrasing, live with it. You can survive with it. So, uh, um, Dr. Miranda, all I'm saying to you and to everybody yesterday that we may not like what how some people treat us, but they are there for a reason. Good word, Hilda. Strong word. Amen. Yeah, timely word. Sometimes we don't know. 
Yeah. People say, oh no, I've been saved now eight years. I don't cuss anymore until you get offended the right way. Uh -oh. Well, I don't do that anymore. And sometimes God will allow people to step on us in certain ways. Yet, yeah, he knows when us. that yeah, comes out of us, we realize, wow, man, you know what? I got to go like y'all. And sometimes we think that we are right, but that's why he goes from stage to stage. I was thinking of what I used to do. Um, I was never a person to do much weights. I did a lot of push-ups and workout years ago. When you start doing that first, the first week, you're in pain. Yeah. Muscles are sore. But you know something about resistance? When things press on you, if you don't press back, your muscles never grow. Wow. If you just allow things to press on you, you're just going to take a beating, but you never grow. But as you push back, and you push back, now your muscles begin to work. They're going to start getting stronger and stronger. And the funny thing is, I've known this from experience, after a while, the pain is gone. Wow. wow. Things that I used to pick up that was a struggle, I can pick it up with no effort yeah. now because I'm stronger. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But, but I, because I understand that, I stayed in the process. And I, I, even over the years, I've been off and on. I hate to get back in the starting point because I don't have to go through that pain. But you know what? Because I understand it, I endure it knowing that the end is going to be, I'm going to get stronger. But guess what? You have muscle memory too. Yeah. Because, and it's funny, yeah. even after years when I haven't been doing it, when I start over again, it's, it's not as bad as the first time. Because I'm already built up a little bit. So what happens is God continues to, and sometimes, it's so funny, I told, I told the previous ago, I'll keep saying this, there are times when a person might do something and say something and walk away. We may not like the method in what they did or how they said it, but you know what, there was a lesson in there for us. And that person walks away, and here you are sitting there upset. The Holy Spirit comes to you and says, did you hear what they just said? Yeah, 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 you're upset. You're grumbling, but did you hear what they just said? That was for you. You know, like the way they said it, sometimes, again, that person is growing too. They don't really have much grace in their mouth. They're going to fling stuff out of their mouth in a way that hurts, but the lesson is in there, and it's a pure lesson. It may not be a pure method, but the Holy Spirit lets you catch what they said, and you walk away, and now you, if you receive the deposit, it's for your benefit. If you reject it because I don't like the way they said it, and she's too decent, no, God will let people step on you. Oh, yeah, at work. And guess what? After they step on you, you still got to turn around and submit to the authority. That's part of growing. Yes. I'm not going to submit to that. Yes, you do. And if you don't, guess what? You go somewhere else, it'll happen with someone else again. Why? God keeps taking you to the same lesson, a different person, same lesson. Wow. Different job, same lesson. People go to another relationship, same lesson. Mm -hmm. Why? Because he's trying to form something inside of us. And they're not getting away. God loves us that much. He wants us to grow. So sometimes he uses nice things, something he let people offend us. And yes, maybe you might flip out and cuss. You want to punch someone and all of a sudden you think, oh my goodness, what did I just do? It's in there. But let him get it out. Amen. I, I was tell people, you know, I was come driving down it this morning, and you know how we, we quote the scripture, if God be for us, then who can be against us? What about if God be against us? Who can be for us? Oh, Lord. <laughs> Father, God. God is in. <laughs> but he's against. God is against. Uh. Flesh is an enemy. <laughs> Satan is an enemy. The world is an enemy. So God deals with his enemies, and God wants to get that flesh out of us. But yet he uses things, and whatever means necessary, there's something called necessary force. Mm -hmm. He's going to use to get, and, and correction in the Greek is a word that talks about cleaning, to purge something out. And sometimes to purge something out, you don't, you don't use something nice. You have to use necessary force to purge something out. And sometimes God knows he will do whatever he has to do. And I kept this in my mind from years back. God is more concerned about his eternal purpose than our temporary pain. You say, why would I have to go through all this? Well, because I have to get that out. Amen. And every time we get up off the operating table and walk away, we got to come back to the operating table and let him do it again. It's for his glory. <laughs> for his glory. Wow, wow. That's awesome. That's awesome. We have to go, but I've got to just read this, this um, last part of just this section because I encourage you guys to read the rest. You know, this last says, this last this section says hope. The kind of hope Paul was talking about was not disappoint, was not disappoint, will not disappoint us. To be sure, people often put their hope in that which is unreliable. We must not put our hope in anything or anyone other than the Lord, who never disappoints. There is good reason our hope is secure. God's love is in our hearts, implanted by His Spirit. From the very first time we heard God's word, the Spirit was at work, convincing us of the truth of Christ. John 16, 7, 8. When we receive Christ, the Holy Spirit takes up residence in our hearts and bodies. Amen. The Spirit takes 
the residence in our body. And I love that word. It's not just an occupying residence. That means that spirit is there to live and to rise in our heart and not to just be going from place to place. It takes residence in our heart. So when something takes residence in your heart, you, it's like your family, you build on it. You know, it takes a process of growth and that is what residence of occupying our hearts by residing there, living there. And it goes through us in all of our cycles, all of our, um, you know, said, the processes of life. The Holy Spirit is there with his troops and ready to serve. And we just give God praise and holler with his love, his peace, his grace, and the hope that we have through Christ Jesus. And that is what activates our faith as we grow through Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Think it's about life with you. Close us up in prayer. Lord, we magnify you. We praise you, Lord God. We just thank you, Lord, for how you loved us, Lord. We just thank you for the great price, God, that you bought us with, Lord. We just thank you, Lord, that by faith, Lord, we just can continue to stay at your feet and walk humbly before you, Lord, full of your wisdom and your glory. In Jesus' mighty name I pray.